Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Games and Things. Are you a fan of old-fashioned arcade games? Bob Hodge and I were talking recently about the games that we grew up with. And let me tell you, Games and Things now has a classic stand-up arcade game that features hundreds, hundreds of the games you played and grew up with all on one machine. And they are all perfect repli uh, replicas of those games you played, whether that's Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Centipede, Tetris, Galaga, mm. It's all, hundreds of them on one machine. Get down and see it at Games and Things at the corner of Kingston Pike and Lovell Road because life should be fun, and let me tell you, their showroom is a lot of fun. OurGameRoom.com if you can't make it down there. Games and Things. All right, let's take a look at the results of the poll. Wow. Two things that Tennessee's never done. Make a Final Four, reach the college football playoff. Of course, one of those goes back a lot farther than the other one, but still, 71% of you right now feel better about Dalton Connect and Tennessee's chances of making the Final Four this year than you do Nico Iamaliava and Tennessee football's chances of making a playoff this year. And in a wide, wide lead. That surprised me. Okay, take a look here. Mel Kuyper, uh, he ranked three Vols inside the top ten of their positions, although he changed one of their positions. Here's the way he's got it. McAllen Castles ranked not with the tight ends, but instead he listed him as the number eight fullback slash H-back in the draft. He ranks Joe Milton as the number nine quarterback in the draft, and he ranks Jalen Wright as the number 10 running back in the draft. My biggest problem is the last one. I think Jalen yes. Wright is better than the 10th best running back on his list. Bob Hodge, give me your number one takeaway. You can only pick one. What's your number one takeaway from his uh, My number one takeaway is, is Mr. Castles being number eight means he will be undrafted. Because fullbacks and H-backs in the NFL now are becoming an afterthought. So to him, that not makes a good me list. think that, yeah, he's, he's a bit undrafted free agent, being that far down on that list. Okay. And I also agree that Wright, way wrong. <laughs> yeah, Jalen Wright's way wrong. I would have yeah. Jalen Wright right behind Blake Corum on that list somewhere around number five. I just watched, how many times did we watch Jalen Wright hit the line of scrimmage and somebody had made contact and he pushed that pile he, three or four yards? He would carry mm -hmm. five and six yeah. and seven guys at least once a game. In the SEC, yep. yeah, that to me, that one's way off. I, I agree with that, and his speed is going to show out, and I think he's going to have a really good combine pre-draft workout, uh, and I think he's going to move up those lists. Uh, to me, it was Joe Milton ahead of Jordan Travis. Uh, maybe Travis is being held back because of the injury questions. That probably factors in. And, and Joe Milton is probably going to go, Jim, I know you feel that way, that somewhere in the mid-rounds. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think uh, I, nine to me surprised me, though, because there's going to be a big run on quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. yeah, Jordan Travis behind Milton to me was the one, and it could be the injury situation. I do wonder from Bob's point, uh, because tight ends are valued in the NFL, if McCaslis was the number eight tight end. Yeah, it'd be a better would, shape than. Would they view him differently? And what's crazy is on the list of fullbacks and H-backs, there's a bunch of pass-catching tight ends. Yes, there are. There are, yeah. Westover yeah. at Washington, Trey Knox. So I, I don't. that's kind of weird the way he kind of laid those out separately. I, I kind of looked at it and thought that it was the way that if, if you were split out as opposed to putting your hand in the dirt, he had you as an H-back fullback. Mm -hmm. right. And then if you put your hand in the dirt and you were more of a blocking guy, had you as a tight end. But it, but it wasn't 100% each way when right. I looked at those rankings. Yeah. Where's Brock Bowers? He's at tight end. He's a tight end, I know, exactly. He didn't ever put his hand in the no, ground. Yeah. Yeah. The Milton thing is also it. I mean, I know we just touched it, but let's get back to that. Ninth overall at quarterback. And Somebody's going to fall in love. Well, Somebody I'm, like I'm, all I'm, these college coaches did. I would just say, look at Jamarcus Russell. I would tell these people, uh, nothing against Joe Milton, but I would just tell them, go look at Jamarcus Russell. You fell in love with the big arm, and look at what happened. Big arm, ESPN had the stat this week, Vince, we were talking about, I think he was, uh, passes 20 yards or more, he completed 28% was the number I saw. 28% mm -hmm. on 20 yards or more, not 40 yards or more, 20 yards or more. That is a standard NFL if, throw. If you take Joe Milton and his stats, he's an undrafted free agent at the end of the draft. But when you take the way he looks, when you take the way he throws, all of that stuff together, Jimmy, you said before the end of the fourth round that you think he'll be, he'll drafted? be drafted no later than the fourth round. I'm, I think he's going to wow somebody, especially in this era where one. we Take watched one. Josh That's Allen in his last year as quarterback of Wyoming not play particularly well. Anthony Richardson, I cannot believe somebody drafted him that early because that guy was not a good quarterback in college. 
but he's able. The, the, the Hell NFL of a runner, game's though. different. Far better runner. Yes. You're seeing a lot yeah, of and more willing. Right. Yes, far better runner, more yeah. willing runner. No, I, th- I think willing. wherever Joe Milton's drafted, he's going to be overdrafted. I hope he does well. I mean, I, I hope yeah, the kid does well. Yeah, it'd be great, but yeah. I just don't see it. What Anthony Richardson did only helps Joe Milton because now they look to the future for them. And then Will Levis was another arm guy that a lot of us thought, wow, I'm not going to do that. I would That's take all those guys over, I would. I would take all those guys over Milton. But I'm all saying I'm saying that can still impact someone making that decision. Oh, yeah. they, especially you rolled the dice on a fourth, yeah. fifth round pick, right? Yeah. Like, Or if you've got a second one because of some type of trade that you made yeah. somewhere, why not roll the dice? He's the slowest processing quarterback I saw all year. He's the one that I yeah. saw that stood there and, went, and you saw the circle buffering. <laughs> so you're the, saying fifth round. Uh, <laughs> yeah, to the Patriots. He'll wind up in New England, guaranteed. All right. Uh, when we come back, let's talk. By the way, I do want to clarify one thing. We've started the music. I'll clarify it on the other side. When we come back, a Cavalieris line for the Vols versus Gamecocks and which VFLs reach Super Bowl 58. We'll be back on the Sports Source. <laughs> 